join kids hat family hey tia Yes, Tofu. My teacher wrote a report that I need to get signed by mom. What? Why? She said that I didn't do things as asked. Oh, why is that? Uh, I just thought she's giving instructions just like that. I didn't think there was any meaning to her instructions. That's not a good thing, Tofu. Yes. But why does she give so many instructions? And why do I have to follow them always? Hmm. I think you should follow your teacher's instructions otherwise you will experience something similar to Peter Rabbit. Why? What did he experience? Peter Rabbit Once upon a time there lived a rabbit called Peter Rabbit He lived with his mother and brothers Flopsy Mopsy and Cottontail One day their mother told them that she was going out for some work. Children, I have to go finish some errands. Till then, you can go and play in the lane. Just be careful that you do not go to MacGregor's garden at all. You all remember that your father had an accident there, don't you? Mrs. McGregor had put him in the pie. Once their mother had gone, all the brothers went down the lane to play. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail were very good kids, and they followed their mother's instructions. But Peter Rabbit was a naughty one. He went to the McGregor's garden all by himself and squeezed himself under the fence. The garden was full of delicious vegetables. Wow! So many vegetables. I will eat them all. And quickly Peter Rabbit filled his stomach with lettuce french beans and radishes Oh I think I have eaten too much I need some parsley to help my stomach And so Peter went looking for parsley deeper in McGregor's garden He was just crossing the cucumber patch when he ran into Mr. McGregor. Thief, stop, stop right there. Mr. McGregor ran after Peter trying to catch him. The moment Peter saw him coming, he took off. Oh no! I must run. If I get to the shed, I should be okay. Peter quickly dashed into the tool shed and dived into a can. The can was filled with water. But Peter had no choice. 
Mr. McGregor had followed him into the shed. Where did that rabbit go? Mr. McGregor couldn't find Peter anywhere and so he decided to check outside the shed. As soon as he turned away, Peter got out of the can and dashed out. But Mr. McGregor spotted him. There, that thief! After him! I won't let him go this time! Somehow, Peter managed to get away. He caught his breath and sat down under the blueberry bush. Just then he heard someone talking to him. Are you okay? Uh, can you help me find the way out of here? The mouse showed Peter the way out of the garden. Peter quickly got out of the garden and headed home. Oh, Peter! Good, you're home! What took you so long? Uh, nothing, Mom. I am just very tired. I think I will sleep. The mother was very surprised. She let Peter go to sleep early. At supper time, she made the children's favorite dinner. And served them the carrot pie that she had got for them from the market. But Peter Rabbit was so tired that he slept through the entire dinner and missed his favorite meal. Oh no! I don't think I ever want to experience anything like that. I will think twice before not following any instructions from my elders. That's awesome, Tofu! Come on now, we'll get you some carrot pie and then you can get the report signed by mom. Yes, let's go Tia. Look at that man, Tia. He looks so scary. I wouldn't want to be around him. That is not a nice thing to say, Tofu. Just because he scares you, doesn't mean he's not kind and caring. Let me tell you a story of the beauty and the beast. The Beauty and the Beast Belle lived in a village with her father Morris who was an inventor. One morning, as she was returning from the market, a hunter named Gaston stopped her. Gaston was an arrogant young man. Everybody in the village knew he always got what he wanted. But no one ever dared stand up against him because his father was the village head. The only person who paid no attention to Gaston was Belle. 
But Gaston was obsessed with her and wanted to marry her. Belle, let me walk you home. Oh, Gaston, N no, thank you. I can go home myself. I insist. I have to talk to your father about something important too. Belle continued walking, ignoring Gaston, who started walking with her. Once home, Belle quickly went inside. Morris, Morris, come out. I have to talk to you. What is it? It is your lucky day. I am going to marry Belle. You have lost your mind. Go away, Gaston. Belle is never going to marry you. Just then, there was a loud explosion in Morris's lab. And he took off towards it. Belle also ran towards her father's lab. Seeing that there was no one he could push around, Gaston left. Papa! Papa! Are you alright? I have done it, Belle. My experiment was successful. I am leaving for the fair in the nearby village immediately. You will see, my child. People are going to love this. And so Morris leapt on his horse Philip and rode off. But as he was crossing the forest, he got lost. After a few hours, Philip and he landed in front of a huge lonely castle. There was no one in sight, so Morris tied Philip to a pole at the entrance and went inside the castle. It was pitch dark inside. A few candles were lit in the corners. Hello? Is anyone here? I am lost. C can you help me? A large shadow came across the wall. As it came into light, Morris saw that it was not a man, but a huge angry beast with an ugly scar across his face. How dare you enter my castle? You need help? I will help you. I'm sorry. I, I will leave immediately. And Morris started running back the way he had come. But the beast caught him and started dragging him. He took him down the staircase and locked him in the dungeon. Please, please let me go. Please let me go. You will stay here forever. This dungeon is your world now. A whole day had passed and Morris hadn't returned. Belle got worried and decided to go to the nearby village to look for her father. But she too got lost in the forest and landed up at the same castle. Philip was still there, tied to the pole. Belle decided to go inside just in case her father was there. Hello? Papa? Anybody here? How dare you enter my castle? Get out right away! 
before I lock you in the dungeon too. Suddenly, the beast moved out of the shadows and stood in front of Belle. She was terrified of him, but dared not run. Somewhere from far away, she could hear another voice. It was her father. Please, please let me go. Let me go, please. Open this door. Let me go, please. Do you have my father? Can you please let him go? Hey, what are you saying? I will stay instead of him. Please let him go. Hearing this, the beast took Belle's hand and dragged her up the stairs. He led her into a huge room. So be it. Your father is free and you shall be my prisoner forever. And so it was. No matter how much Morris protested, the beast threw Morris out of the castle and into the forest with Philip. When dinner time came, Belle did not join the beast for dinner. Instead, she stayed in her room crying. The beast entered her room and said, If you are going to stay in this castle, you have to follow its rules. You are expected at dinner. Don't you dare miss it next time. You are a monster. You didn't even let me see my father one last time. Go away. I hate you. Seeing Belle heartbroken, the beast felt bad. He pulled out a hand mirror from his coat and gave it to her. In the mirror, she would be able to see whomever she wanted to see at that moment. Belle looked into the mirror and saw her father finally leaving from the castle and riding into the forest. But to her horror, she saw he and Philip had suddenly been attacked by a pack of wolves. She gave out a loud cry and ran downstairs out of the castle gates and towards her father. Soon. She found herself and her father, Morris, surrounded by ferocious wolves. Just as the wolves were about to attack Belle, a large paw grabbed one of them by the neck and threw it away. The wolves now turned on the beast who had decided to follow Belle and help her save her father. The bees scared them off, but not before they had bit into his arm and injured Morris too. He put Morris on Philip, who took off riding as soon as his master was secure. The bees tried to walk towards the castle, but fainted and fell. He woke up two days later to find Belle sitting by his bedside in his room. The wounds on the arm had been bandaged. You... you didn't go? You are awake. I hope you're feeling better. Thank you for saving our lives. Over the next few days, Belle nursed the beast back to health.
As they spent time together, Belle realized that he wasn't as mean as he appeared to be the first day they had met. In turn, the beast learned to change his ways and became gentler and kinder. Soon they became very good friends. One day, Belle asked the beast if she could see her father in the mirror. The beast agreed and gave her the mirror. In the mirror, Belle saw all the villagers storming her house. They thought that Morris had gone mad and wanted to send him to the doctor. Nobody believed him when he kept insisting that Belle had been kept as a prisoner by a beast. Worried about her father, Belle requested if she could go to the village for a day just to save her father. And though the beast knew that she might never return, he agreed. Go, but take this mirror with you. In case you ever want to see me. Once Belle reached her house, she stood between her father and the villagers and tried to explain the truth. But the angry mob led by Gaston who wanted revenge from Morris and Belle for turning his wedding proposal down, wouldn't listen. Gaston grabbed Belle's hand and tried to get her out of the way. As she struggled to free herself, the beast's mirror fell out of her pocket. In it was the beast, looking right at them all. Goodness! She's shown the beast the way to the village. We must go and kill him before he comes here. The angry mob started marching towards the castle with fire torches and swords. They left behind Morris and Belle locked up in their house. Soon they stormed the castle gates. Gaston went upstairs and challenged the beast to a fight. But the beast had had a change of heart. He did not wish to fight. So he came out of the balcony unarmed and tried to talk to the villagers. But Gaston wouldn't have it. He wanted to kill the beast and so he attacked him. His sword pierced through the beast's stomach. Shocked, the beast swung his arm to protect himself. Scared, Gaston stepped backwards and fell off the balcony and died. Somehow, Belle had escaped from her house. And reached the balcony just as the beast fell on the floor. Uh, I, I love you, Belle. I love you too. Please don't go. Suddenly, the castle lit up with thousands of candles. As Belle still lay crying by the beast, he turned into a handsome young prince. Belle, it's me. You freed me from the witch's spell. To break the spell, I had to love and win the love of another. You loved me even through I was a beast. You saved me, Belle. You saved me. It really is you? 
as they hugged each other, they saw the rest of the castle and the forest bloom with beautiful trees and flowers. So you see, Tofu, you should never judge people by the way they look. I'm sorry, Tia. I will always remember this now. Yay! I've won again, Tia! Wow, Tofu! You've really become good at this game! Do you want to play one more round with me? The winner gets the loser's share of Mom's special pie! Mom? Tofu, look at the time! We've not completed any of our chores! Oh, don't worry about it, Tia. It's a Sunday. We'll just tell Mom that we forgot. But we remember now. We should do it now. Hmm. Do we have to? Mom won't know. Tofu, are you suggesting that we should lie to Mom? And who will lie to her? That's the worst idea you've ever had, Tofu. And you're talking like the little mouse. Uh, the little who? Belling the cat. That's a story that I want to tell you in this context. Once upon a time, the many mice that lived in his store troubled a grocer. These mice are spoiling everything. Today they pierced holes in the grain bags. Oh dear, what should we do? I don't know. If the villagers find out, they will stop coming to the store and buying things from me. Oh no! What will we do then? Our business will be disrupted entirely. I agree. Oh, I have an idea. Why don't you get a cat for the store? A good strong cat will eat the mice away quickly. And new mice will be afraid to enter the store out of her fear. Hmm, that's a brilliant idea. I will get one first thing tomorrow. The next morning, the grocer went and got a big strong cat for his store. Just as his wife had said, she pounced at the first sight of mice. The mice were taken by surprise. Our brothers have been attacked and eaten up by this cat that the grocer has brought. We all should be careful from now on. As the days passed, The movement of the mice became restricted. They always lived in fear of the cat and were unable to get food and supplies for their families from the store. If any of them ventured out, the cat ate them. This distressed the mice very much. They made many plans to avoid and escape the cat but failed miserably. 
We are losing out our brothers and sisters to this cat. Something must be done. I have a simple plan, but I am sure it will be successful. We just have to put a bell around the cat's neck. Every time the cat will move, we will hear the bell ring first. This will give us enough time to escape her. That's a very good idea. Good thinking, brother. We should arrange a bell immediately. Yes, I agree. This is a very good plan. But I have just one question. Who will bell the cat? Suddenly, there fell a hush over the excited mice because none of them had the answer to the question. None had the courage to risk his own life to bell the cat. And so it remained that the cat was never belled. So you see Tofu? It is one thing to just give out ideas and another to actually go ahead and do as you've said. Yes dear, I am ashamed of what I suggested. I said it without considering whether it was right or wrong and possible or impossible. Come, let's go and finish off the chores. I am glad you understood that Tofu. Now let's start with putting away these games. Cookies are so yum. I can eat them forever. Tofu, have you ever imagined what if these cookies become alive? Alive? Hmm, this reminds me of a story. The Gingerbread Man Long ago, there lived an old couple. One day, the old woman cooked a gingerbread cookie in the shape of a man. As soon as the gingerbread man was cooked, He jumped out of the tin and ran out of the open window, shouting, Don't eat me! He ran away as fast as he could. The old couple tried to chase the gingerbread man, but he was too fast for them. Soon, a hungry pig saw the gingerbread man and said, Stop! I would like to eat you! He too joined the chase. The gingerbread man was too fast and said, You can't catch me. I am the gingerbread man. A little further, a hungry cow saw the gingerbread man and said, Stop! I would like to eat you! She too joined the chase. You can't catch me! I'm the gingerbread man! Next, he met a horse. The horse too joined the chase. Finally, the gingerbread man came to a river and stopped as the river could make him soggy. A clever fox came by 
and wanted to eat him up. But he pretended to be nice and offered help to the gingerbread man. He asked the gingerbread man to climb on his head so that he could take him across the river. The gingerbread man was so scared of water that he agreed. As soon as they reached the other side, the fox tossed up the gingerbread man in the air. He opened his mouth and ate him up. That was the end of the gingerbread man. <laughs> I don't want my cookies alive and get eaten by a wolf. <laughs> Enjoy your cookies, Tofu. Would we be able to reach our camp? Yes, Tofu. Don't worry. We will reach our camp soon. But I'm still feeling scared. <laughs> Wait. Let me tell you a similar story. It will help you to distract your mind. Goldilocks and the Three Bears Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Goldilocks. She had golden hair. One morning, she was walking in the forest and lost her way. She saw a friendly cottage. Wow! She knocked on the door. But nobody was there. She went inside the friendly cottage belonged to three bears. Goldilocks was very hungry. She saw three bowls of porridge on the table. First, she tried a spoonful from Daddy Bear's big bowl. This porridge is too hot. Next, she tried from Mama Bear's medium bowl. This porridge is also too hot. Finally, she tried from Baby Bear's small bowl. This porridge is just right. And she ate the whole bowl. Now Goldilocks was tired. She saw three chairs kept in a room. This chair is too big. This chair is too big too. This chair is just right. But the chair broke. Goldilocks was very tired, so she went upstairs. She saw three beds in the room. She sat on the first bed and thought, this bed is too hard. This bed is too soft. This bed is just right. Soon the three bears came home. Who's been eating my porridge? Asked Daddy Bear. Who's been eating my porridge? Asked Mama Bear. Who's been eating my porridge and eaten it all up? Cried Baby Bear. Who's been sitting on my chair? Daddy Bear howled. Who's been sitting on my chair? Wondered Mama Bear. Who's been sitting on my chair and it's broken? 
cried baby bear They went up in the room and saw who's been sleeping on my bed said daddy bear who's been sleeping on my bed said mama bear who's been sleeping on my bed and she is still there screamed baby bear goldilocks woke up and saw the three bears she was so frightened that she jumped out of the bed and raced through the forest and she never came back Goldilocks lost her way too, just like us. <laughs> no, Tofu, we have not lost our way. See, we are already at the camp. Animals have such an easy life, dear. No school. No rules, no homework. What do they have to worry about? Everybody has their troubles, Tofu. Let me tell you the story of Thumbelina. Once upon a time, a woman lived by herself in a far away village. She was very lonely after her husband had died. She always wanted to have a child, but alas, she didn't have any. One day she went to her friend who was a witch. The witch gave her a grain of barley. And told her to go back home and plant it. The woman did as she was told. The next morning, a beautiful plant had grown from the seed. It had a lovely flower that looked like a tulip. The woman had never seen a flower like that and was mesmerized by its beauty. She gently kissed one of its petals. As she did that, the flower blossomed open. Inside it was a beautiful little girl, no bigger than the size of the woman's thumb. The woman instantly fell in love with her and called her Thumbelina. Thumbelina took away the woman's loneliness. In the day, she would tell her stories and talk to her. Sometimes she would make Thumbelina a boat out of a tulip petal which she could row in a plate full of water. At night, Thumbelina would sleep in a bed out of a walnut shell with a blanket made of a rose petal. One night, as she was sleeping, a frog came to her window and saw her. He 
thought to himself, what a beautiful girl. She will make a lovely bride for my son. And so he grabbed Thumbelina and hopped away to his home. When his son saw his bride-to-be, he was very happy. She is beautiful, father. I will marry her. But before that, I want to build her a beautiful house. Okay, son. I will put her on the water lily in the middle of the pond till then. This way she will not be able to escape. And so the frog put Thumbelina in the middle of the pond on a water lily leaf. Thumbelina tried to escape from her new home, but when she couldn't, she broke down crying. Two minnows were sitting under the same leaf and they heard her cry. They asked her about her troubles and when she told them, they decided to help her. They nibbled away the lily stem. Soon it broke and floated away with Thumbelina. Just when Thumbelina thought she was free, a beetle came down and took her away to his home. He called over his friends to introduce them to his pretty prisoner. But the beetle's friends told him that she was too different than them and she didn't belong with them. I agree. I think I should let her go. And so he dropped her in the long grass and flower. Thumbelina was very happy that she was free from her captors. However, she still did not know where her home was. She spent many days in the grass and between the flowers. She would eat the pollen of the flowers and drink the dew from the leaves. One day, as she was walking, she stumbled upon a small house made of mud. It had a strange round entrance. She went up to it and knocked on the door. A mouse opened the door. Oh, hello there. Isn't it cold out there for you today? Come in, please. Thank you so much. Once Thumbelina was settled comfortably in the mouse's house, he asked her about who she was. Thumbelina told him her entire story. Do not worry, you can stay here as long as you like. So Thumbelina started staying in her new found home. To make herself useful in the house, she would cook for the mouse and tell him stories. After a few days, the mouse said he had invited a guest over. He is the richest mouse in all the land. He is a very good friend of mine. That night, the mouse's friend came over for dinner.
they all talked and had a very good time. During the course of dinner, the friend fell in love with Thumbelina and declared that he would marry her. Thumbelina had no choice but to go along with what was happening. When the friend offered to show her his home, she agreed to visit his house. And the three of them set off together. On the way, they entered a tunnel. There they found an injured swallow lying on the ground. The mouse's friend kicked it and rudely said, Serves her right. What is she doing in the tunnels? He should have stayed in the air. Thumbelina was shocked to see that someone could treat another like this. Unseen by the mice, she ran away from there. Once she was sure that the mice had left, she came back and attended to the swallow. She took great care of her. Till she was fit to fly again. It became spring by the time the swallow could fly again. She told Thumbelina, I have to join my family and friends. They have flown away to a warmer place. I cannot stay here. Come with me. But Thumbelina had had enough adventure and did not want to go anywhere else. And so the swallow flew away. A few months had passed when the love-struck friend of the mouse found Thumbelina again. Oh my beloved, I have been looking for you everywhere. Now I have found you and must marry you. Thumbelina knew there was no way out of it for her. So she asked him if she could spend one last day out in the open air before she was confined to living the rest of her life underground with him. As she roamed in the open fields for one last time, she heard a familiar voice. Come, come away with me, where your spirit will always be free. Thumbelina saw her old friend who had returned for her. This time around, she agreed and hopped on the back of the swallow and they took off. They flew over land and water and fields of green. When they reached the land of the flowers, the swallow landed Thumbelina on a beautiful flower petal. This is the kingdom of the flowers and that is their king. Thumbelina saw a handsome young king with beautiful wings. He was surrounded by lovely flowers. As soon as she saw him, she knew she wanted to call this place home. Her presence attracted the king's attention. He too fell in love with her immediately. Will you marry me? Yes! As happiness spread across her face, 
she grew a beautiful pair of wings and became the flower queen. Oh wow, Tia! I don't know what I would do if I would land in such a strange world. I think I am happy where I am. For your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Heart family. Subscribe here.